the Earth itself, spinning in a wide celestial path around the sun, offers us today a key to one of the nation's most pressing and urgent defense problems, guidance. Guiding an airborne vehicle, an armed missile, from any point here on the Earth's surface to any aggressor target. Now, like the sun and the stars, the Earth refers its motions to inertial space. Why not then refer the motion of a missile to the same unchanging frame of reference? Why not, in effect, put a platform in the sky, ever oriented to a selected point in inertial space, or to a point here on Earth, and use this reference to navigate straight to any target on land or sea? Such a navigation system would be completely self-contained during flight, free of any reference to the Earth or celestial bodies. It would be an inertial guidance system. The Department of Defense, Industry, and Research Institutions have exerted considerable effort developing inertial guidance for a number of military applications. Now, for a detailed discussion on this work, I'm going to introduce some of the men who have helped bring inertial guidance to its present state of development. First, let's visit Cambridge, Massachusetts, and the Instrumentation Laboratory of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, where Dr. Charles S. Draper, a pioneer in the field of inertial navigation, will discuss the theoretical aspects of developing a truly efficient inertial guidance system. Inertial navigation is a very old a science in the sense that all of the essential bits of knowledge to make a system of this kind has been known for a long, long time. As a matter of fact, the gyro compass people working back in the early 1900s had all the essential knowledge. This knowledge was formalized, written down uh, for all of posterity uh, by Dr. Schuller in uh, the early 1920s. He knew what had to be done. It was impossible in those days to accomplish the practical result because of the fact that the techniques and components were not available. Since that time, the tremendous developments in electronics and in components, in servo mechanism theory, machining technique, and materials have made it possible to realize inertial navigation that is, navigation that depends only on self-contained elements within the system. Now, the essential point of the inertial navigation art is that gyros provide a means for holding a gyro package still, that is, non-moving with respect to the stars, in spite of the motion of the base upon which they may be carried and also upon the possibility of picking up the effects of gravity and acceleration by means of pendulums and accelerometers. Schuller contributed the knowledge of how you could, in effect, beat Einstein by, on a spherical surface around the Earth, arranging to have a system be conscious only of gravity, so it can pick up the local direction of gravity on a moving base, no matter how the base itself may be accelerated. Now, the essential elements in such a system are shown here in this uh, schematic diagram, the stick and wire diagram, as we call it. The essential element, as far as the inertial part of it is concerned, consists of this gyro package having an X gyro, a Y gyro, and a Z gyro. Now, each of these gyros has the property of picking up rotation about one axis, and only one axis. This gyro here, for example, picks up rotation around this axis, this one about this axis, and this one here about the axis of this gimbal. These gyros generate signals, and these signals are then transferred to these drive motors. This one here, this one here, and this one here, so that in effect, 
as this system is moved through space on a, on a base, any action which would move these motors to rotate these gyros with respect to inertial space uh, produces a signal which causes the gyro package to be brought back into coincidence with its original setting. Now this inertial package, as we call it, does not in fact contain within itself any means of setting itself. You set it and then it remains in that position. The trick is low drift rate gyro. Outside of this gimbal, with this axis here lined up with the Earth's polar axis, there is a drive. This is a time drive, and in effect rotates this package with respect to this gimbal, so that this gimbal has the Earth's rotation taken out of it. This gimbal stays still with respect to the Earth. Then the next gimbal out has means for rotating the green gimbal with respect to the black gimbal. That sets up the whole system so that this axis across here is horizontal when the equipment is in a great circle course. This axis here establishes the great circle course. Now that's all done by the gyros and the servo drives and the gimbals. That does not seek out the direction of gravity. That establishes the path in which the the plane in which the airplane must move. These accelerometers here pick up motion sideways and along the course, and this little platform is rotated again by servos in such a fashion that it remains always normal to the direction of gravity, so far as fore and aft motion is concerned, and the airplane itself is flown through a control system from this accelerometer to keep it in this great circle course. The result is that you have an automatic system that will take you from one place to another place without any external information. Now the heart of this system, that is the thing that had to be developed <coughs> before such a, an arrangement is possible, is the gyro. And this gyro is indicated in its essentials here. This gyro is a single degree of freedom gyro because it acts only about one axis here. And it is an integrating gyro because as you rotate it around this axis here, the tipping of this part in here with respect to the outer case is proportional to the time integral of the rotation rate about this axis. In other words, the rotation angle of this with respect to the case is proportional to the rotation of the case about this axis with respect to inertial space. Now, this is accomplished by means of the spinning wheel, the gyro, placed inside of a hermetically sealed can, which is then floated in a fluid that is carried in this uh, clearance volume in here in such a fashion that the fluid resists motion between the float and the case with a torque which is proportional to the rate of rotation of this with respect to this. That is where the integration process comes from. This device here picks up the angle of the float with respect to the case. The other end is a means for applying a torque to this case for control purposes. And these nuts here are for the purpose of balance. Later, you will see the details of construction of a device like this. This can be made quite accurate and pick up very small components of Earth's rate. Now, the inertial navigation art is certainly only in its infancy. We have proved that we can do the thing from an engineering standpoint. We have proved that we can manufacture components which have approximately the a performance required, but you can confidently look forward to great improvements and improvements which will in fact extend the capabilities of the systems that we know them today many times.